Hey there, my name is Heidi and I recruit product managers. Recently, I've partnered with a TPMA who have offered my time as a benefit to members. Members have been invited to be able to book time on my calendar for a resume review or a career discussion. And one of the things that I've learned is that so many of those members have have the same questions or are struggling with the same thing. So I thought I'd share with you today some of the insights that I've learned and some of the things that we've talked about in case it helps a broader community out there, maybe someone who didn't have a chance to book some time with me or if you're outside of the Toronto area. One of the most common questions I've been asked is, how long should a resume be? Some people have been, have been told, I've been told it should be no longer than one page. Others have a two or a three page resume. So what is the right answer? Well, first of all, it all depends. My general response to that question goes like this. The obvious person who's going to have one page for a resume is someone with one page worth of career experience. Often that is a fresh graduate or someone in their first phase of their career. They've got one or two employers and that beautifully and neatly fits onto one page, you know, still with an aesthetic, nice spacing, you know, all the good things. It just makes sense. But what happens if you are actually a working professional and have been one for 10 plus years where your journey has, has maybe created some pivots in your career? Maybe you started off as an engineer. So there's like an engineering top track. Then you moved into enterprise pre-sales or solutions architecture. And then someone came up to you one day and said, hey, you'd make a great product manager. And you said, what's that? But you know what? That was six years ago and you are loving life and so glad that you became a product manager. So, so how does someone like that fit in their career into whether it's one or two or more pages? Well, first of all, there's a thing in the industry called recency bias where your most recent, so your current and most recent employers are what's going to matter. That's going to determine most likely whether the employer who you submit a resume to or a recruiter is going to want to book some time with you to learn more. Remember, a resume is not going to be the thing that gets you the job, but it is. The role of the resume is to try to get you a meeting so that then you can meet stakeholders and face-to-face, eye-to-eye, conversation-to-conversation, build bridges, connect, all the good stuff that they feel confident, you know what, this is a person for us. And then the journey towards that, towards, towards your future job begins. Okay. But we have to, we cannot lose sight of the fact that recency matters. So, so emphasis needs to be given on your current and most last role, maybe your last three jobs, depending on how long you worked. Okay. After that, you've got some big decisions to make. If there have been many iterations of your career and you've changed job functions several times, at some point you're just going to take it off your resume and you're going to refer to the time by saying earlier experience includes and then you're just going to very quickly bullet point the company, the function, the years because you're accounting for time. Okay? Same applies if you've been in the industry for a very long amount of time. Maybe you've been a working professional for 20, 25 years. You know, you're sort of, you know, coming, you know, I don't want to say all the things, but you know what I'm saying. And, and so there's too much to say. So you're really going to curate. We talked about curation in the first video tips that I shared about um, my journey helping the TPA members um, with their resumes. We want to curate so that earlier olden days information is not that relevant. It's not probably even who you are anymore. So get it off under earlier experience includes. The average person can do a really bang up job with two pages. Two pages is more than enough time. If you have three or more pages, like I'm talking five or 10 pages, chances are you have relocated from an overseas market like Europe to North America and you've got to really reimagine things because your resume might be 10 pages and may include things like the schools that your children attend. Guess what? We don't care about that. Okay? So those are my answers about length of resume. I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments or feedback, drop me a note and good luck with that resume. Keep at it. And I wish you much success on your resume writing journey. Have a great day.